Hi, uh, I'm Beetle. I just want to say thank you so, 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 so much for uh, buying my newest horse base. It really means a lot to me. It's my full-time job. So this helps me pay the bills, help me afford to live. So I'm very grateful. Thank you. So I'm going to show you today how to set up your base in Unity, how to export your model and use it in VRChat. So um, first, what you're going to want to do is open up your creator companion. You don't want to make your Unity file in any other way. So first, what you're going to want to do is open up your creator companion. You're going to hit create new project. You're going to select avatars and then name it what you please. Name it video, blah, blah, blah. Uh, make sure that you know where your project's going to be located. I have a Unity project location, although because this is an example and I'm going to get rid of it, I am just going to put it on my desktop. Then you're going to hit create project. And then what I recommend for adding is your gesture manager right here. Um, and I just use that for checking that everything works. Um, I also usually have my pumpkins avatar tools installed in. While this doesn't come with creator companion, um, you can add it on your own, but I won't add it for this example. Then you're just going to hit open project. Um, something that's really great about creator companion is it'll keep your VR chat SDK up to date. Um, and you don't have to worry about keeping track of when it updates, it will let you know, and then you can update it. Uh, once you have your Unity file open, all you're going to want to do is open up the folder and where it says Unity package and just double click on the Unity package. It will already have the shaders in that package, so you don't have to install them on your own. Although if you have an issue with the shaders, you just have to um, delete the folder that says Poyomi and then uh, re-upload it. But you can find whatever version of Poyomi is the most recent um, online. So once you have your Unity file open, it'll look something like this. Um, um, your file's gonna look like something like this after you've imported in uh, the Unity package. There'll be two folders, Poyomi and BGB Horse. So what you're gonna wanna do is open up the horse, double click where it says click me, and then you will have this big fat Unity file, which um, will have QR codes here, but I'm currently recording the video so you can't see those. So over here on the left, you'll have your PC horses and on the right, you'll have your quest horses and they're also sorted here. So if you want to hide them, you can. There is a directional light here, but I have it hidden, although it's still working, just so that the icon is not in my way, same as the main camera, which I have in game mode over here. So this is your file. So what I recommend doing, if you're of course uploading one of the prefabs, just make sure that there is no blueprint ID. So you're gonna wanna make sure there's no blueprint ID here. Uh, there shouldn't be, but if I accidentally left one on, you're just gonna wanna make sure to hit detach right here. So you can click on any of these models and it should have everything there. So first I'm gonna hide all of the quest horses. Um, and I'm also going to hide all of the PC horses for now, but if you wanted to just upload any of these as they are, you can literally click on one and go to builder and literally, um, let's see, so that's the rainbow Pegasus, totally not rainbow dash, it's rainbow Pegasus. Um, and you're just gonna hit uh, build and publish for windows. And then if you're doing Android, you're gonna switch to build target, but I'll show, I'll show how to do that later. Um, I just shrink the inspector because I like having more space here. So you can do that if you wanted, but we're gonna start from scratch here. So you can, at least for now, hide your quest horses, hide your PC horses. I'm gonna hold shift and select them all and then uncheck them. And then I'm going to recheck the BGB horse everything. To scoot everything out, you're gonna just grab this prefab and pull it out of everything else. Um, see how the position says one, and you're just gonna center it to zero. Um, so this right here has every single part attached. So if you hold alt and click here, you will see there's a lot of hidden stuff and that is all of the parts attached. So, um, I'm going to hit alt again and then just open it the regular way. So, um, this is how you're going to pick the parts that you want. Um, my mouth isn't moving. Okay. Um, so you're going to pick what parts you want. So... For this example, we are gonna just turn on some random parts. I'm gonna put the crop tail on. You can rotate here. Um, and then we can get rid of everything else. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're going to right click 
on BGB Horse Everything and you're going to unpack prefab completely. Now in doing so, you will still have the original version um, in this folder here that says start here. So it'll have the PC version and the Quest version there. Um, and so you can literally drag and drop it back into the uh, hierarchy here. But we're gonna unpack this prefab and then everything that we don't want, I'm gonna hold um, control and select everything that I don't want and I'm going to hit delete. And I'm gonna get rid of it. Then we're gonna go to the spine chest. So if you don't want wings, you're gonna select it and hit delete. Then you're gonna to want to, I hold alt and then click on both shoulders. And if you don't want the arm fluff, you're gonna go here, of course, click control for both, hit delete. Um, same with the leg fluff, you're gonna to wanna to open up the thighs here and get rid of them. Of course, if you wanna keep them, then you just turn them on and the, they're already paired to the proper bones. So you don't have to worry about that. And all of the colliders are paired to the proper bones. That's another reason that I have it set up like this. Then we're gonna pick, um, so if you have the longer mane, there's two parts to it. So there's the bottom part that's paired to the neck. Um, but if you're not using that, then you can delete it. You're gonna open up the head and then all the ears are here. So let's, we're gonna have donkey ears so we can get rid of all the others. And then we're gonna pick the short hair and then we're gonna have the unicorn horn and we can delete everything else. Make sure not to delete the reins, um, just everything else. So you can delete all that. And then you have all of these with the proper colliders set up, as you can see here. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, of course, keep everything as is. Um, when attaching materials, you're gonna wanna turn the reins on and you're gonna click on the body and you're gonna show the bridle as well for attaching your materials. So you can do that now while you're already in here. Then uh, I'm going to hold shift, select all of these and turn them on as well. Um, and then you can go to textures. If you've already exported your textures from Substance Painter after following my Substance Painter tutorial, which I will have linked, um, then you can create your own folder if you'd like. So you can create a folder and call it custom. Sorry, I can't spell. Um, have it custom and have it here, ready to go. You'll see it here on your left. Um, and then this is what I would recommend doing is you go to prefabs, go to blank. You have your five materials here. Ignore the fact that it's blue. It's just, um, you can just unlock the shader. If it looks blue, you just have to unlock the shader. Okay, so you have your materials here. Um, and so all you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna select these five materials. You're gonna hit control D to duplicate them and then wait for that to be done. And then you're just going to drag and drop it into your custom folder here. Drag and drop. Then you can go to your custom folder and you have your duplicated materials that will have all the proper shine and metallic settings and all that jazz. Um, and just make sure that all of the materials are unlocked by clicking on them and up here hitting unlock shader or you won't be able to edit them. Uh, and that should already be unlocked, good. Uh, and then what you're gonna wanna do now is import in your textures so you can open up your folder wherever you've exported your textures from. I'm going to just drop in some textures that I already have. Okay, so I have my textures. Um, I'm just taking them from different prefabs. So then um, all you need to do now is you're gonna click on body, you're gonna drag and drop your body material here. Then you have to go to emission and also drag and drop it here um, so that it matches. Then you can go to the clothing you're gonna do the same, drag and drop it into the emission map here uh, and drag and drop it into the main texture. Same with ears and tails. Um, same with ears and tails. There's no more emissions on any of the other stuff so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, and all the other materials that are masked, you don't have like a, a map to put on it. So you can just leave it as is. Uh, so extra stuff you're gonna drop once again into the texture and we're using Poyomi 8.1.116. Um, if your material is hot pink, for example, all you have to do is open up this tab here, go to Poyomi 8.1, Poyomi 2 outline and just reselect it um, and that should fix your problem. If the problem's not going away, contact me on Discord and you can figure it out. Um, the outlines are already set up to um, do a slightly darker color than whatever your texture is here. So if you want it all one solid color, you just have to change it here. Um, yeah, 
So, and then same with hair, just gonna drag and drop this into the texture. Then all you have to do is um, drag and drop these materials onto everything that you are trying to change. Um, and then, so the bridle and reins and horn are all considered extra stuff. So you're gonna drag and drop that, drag and drop here. Same here. Um, hair has its own material, so you're gonna drag and drop that. And then you can now hide your reins. You don't wanna hide just the mesh, you wanna hide the whole thing. Um, so you're gonna uncheck it here. You can now re-hide the bridle. Um, and when uploading, you want it hidden. Uh, and you also want the clothing hidden. So we're gonna drag and drop our clothes onto the hoodie. Then we're going to hide the hoodie, drag and drop onto the shorts, the shirt and the tank top. And you can hide those as well. Um, and so we have now added all of our proper materials uh, and you're ready to upload. Now, if you wanna change anything, so the reins have um, blend shapes, so does the bridle. So if you wanna change anything about it, you can hide the bit that's inside. So if you like, for example, I open this up, you can see there's a bit. So if you wanna hide that, you can use this slider, make the straps thicker. You can hide the middle strap. For example, if you have a unicorn horn um, and all that, and then just make sure to hide the bridle again before you um, upload. And then here, these are the MMD visemes. You don't want to touch those, leave them be. Uh, and then you can add all the blend, uh, the blend shapes that you want. So if we want to add uh, a chest, we can add a triangle torso, maybe some thicker legs, maybe bring the waist in a little. Um, there's also horseshoes, but they're hidden inside. So you need to show them by doing show horseshoes here. Um, and they already have like a metallic shader on it. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, so we can split the hooves, but if you split the hooves, I recommend getting rid of the horseshoes since they don't look right. Um, and then you can customize the face. There's lots of sliders for that. Um, so you can have like some thicker brows, but also make them into nub brows. Um, you can put a little split in the eyebrow. You can pick some lashes, change the shape of the eye shinies. Um, you can even like square off the eyes if you want like a square pupil. Um, there's also different noses based on different types of horses. So we've got like a, a Roman nose, Arabian. We've also got just kind of like a square nose. Um, you can also add chin fluff. You can make the chin bigger, smaller. Um, I mean, they're all self-explanatory. It says here what they are. Um, you don't have to worry about making the bridle fit with the different noses. It'll automatically adjust. Um, and then you don't wanna to touch anything in the extra stuff. Um, this is just stuff if you wanna make your own VRM. I'm not including a file because it's a bit complicated, but you're welcome to do it on your own. I will also link a lovely tutorial by my good friend Cade um, on how to turn a VR chat avatar into a VRM file. Um, you can also turn it into a VC face file if you want to have custom animations, but yeah. Um, so ignore these, this is a toggle in game, the Flemin response, the sniff is an idle. So you wanna not touch it, you don't wanna touch the visemes and you don't wanna touch the expressions. Um, yeah, so you have all your sliders. There's also some sliders in some of the ears and some of the um, other, and some of the props. So you can like shorten the unicorn horn, the donkey has some like, ear fluff options, so does the default horse ears. Um, so you can attach all of this. You can set all of that up. And then um, if you have arm fluff or um, you've made any changes to the body itself, you need to make sure to turn on your clothing um, and you need to adjust accordingly. So puffy arms. Now, if you have arm fluff, um, there's something called the arm fluff adjustment. It just lifts up the top of the hoodie so it doesn't clip through. So make sure to do that. Um, and then all of the proper blend shapes are here. Now, when it comes to clothing, after applying blend shapes, there is usually some form of clipping. It's inevitable unless you want to go into Blender, apply the blend shapes to basis, which I will not be explaining how to do. Um, and repaint weight painting for the specific body shape. Um, I've done my best. So 
Um, there will probably be minor clipping in the elbows, for example, uh, or not in the elbows. There'll be minor clipping in the armpits, but it should not bother you too much. Um, so you're going to, yeah, like I said, you're going to want to go through and um, add all your blend shapes. Of course, adjust it to how you want. Um, for example, like here, I would then add a chunk blend shape to make sure that it goes over the shorts. So it's all to your liking. You don't have to do it one to one to make everything match um, with however you put your slider. Just do it how you want it. So I have like the triangle torso and this. And I also have the puffy arms. And if you just want it a little bit bigger, you want it to look a certain way, just play with the blend shapes as you please. Um, but make sure to do it before putting it into Unity. That's the most important part. Um, also, you see this plush slider. I've gotten rid of that blend shape because it was breaking a lot. But um, I kept it on the clothes just because it um, it's just another way to adjust your clothes um, so that if you want it to look a certain way. So... Like I said, make sure to have that hidden, have your bridle hidden, have the reins hidden um, before uploading. And then everything should be good. Um, now, what I recommend doing is, so you'll have your gesture manager in this packages section here, and you're gonna see this little box here, just drag and drop it into your scene, and then you're gonna wanna press play. Wait for that to load, of course. Uh, and then I click on gesture manager and then you're going to want to make sure that the proper um, prefab is picked for it to be able to test. And you can test to make sure that all your expressions work for your right and left hands, you know, open hands, all that business. And you can test it all there. Um, you can also just make sure that there's no clipping by going into locomotion and checking velocity. Um, which is super great. And then you can also check all of your, um, what your menu is gonna be doing. So you can test your ear puppets and tail puppets. And um, there is a wing slider for if you have the wings added. So just ignore it if you didn't upload the wings or if you wanna remove it from your menu, you can do that on your own, but it's just easier to just leave it that way. And then you can test all of your toggles, um, make sure those are working how you want the bridle with the reins, the bridle without the reins. Um, and if you wanna to check to make sure things are grabbable in your game mode, you should be able to grab everything. Um, also, um, your mouse in Gesture Manager will also count as a contact receiver. So that's why um, this particle just went off. So this is the BGB Horsey High Five. Um, another reason, like I said, you want to start with the everything file is because it has it all set up. Um, so you can also test it here in play mode and make sure it all works. Um, yeah, uh, the idle animations will default be on when you join the game. Um, but if you want them off, just turn them off once you're in game and then they won't be doing their thing. Although I personally really like it. And of course there's no wings here. So if you want to turn off the animation, you can. Um, Yeah, I mean, that's it, really. Make sure to go out of play mode. If you're making any edits, make sure you're not in play mode. Um, you can hit delete on Gesture Manager to get rid of it if you don't want it there anymore. Um, and then once you're ready to upload, you're just gonna click on your model, have it selected. As you can see, all the colliders are there for um, what you need. Just once again, make sure that you have everything deleted that you don't want, especially the arm and leg fluff. Um, make sure that's removed if you don't want it. And I, it's um, you just have to open up the thighs and the shoulders all the way and then you'll you'll see it um and then you just have to go to your vr chat sdk select whatever model you have which would be this one but of course um you could rename it uh and so you can select it here um now when you put a custom texture on it will always say Avatar has mint map textures. You just want to click auto fix. Um, I don't recommend hitting auto fix for the material thing. Just leave it and you can hit build and publish for Windows. So once that is built and published for Windows, um, you are ready to upload for Quest if you want it. And I will show you how to do that now. So we're going to actually uncheck all of these guys as well. You don't want any PC um, models um, active on in your scene when uploading for Quest. 
because it just it messes everything up. So before uh, switching over to Android, I recommend setting up your model for Quest beforehand. So here's what you have to do. You're going to select your model. You're going to hit control. Oh, wait. Um, you're going to hit your model and select control D and it's going to duplicate it. And then I recommend labeling it, whatever you want it to be labeled. Um, and after you've already uploaded your PC version, it will have the same um, uh, blueprint ID, which you want to keep so that you can upload a Quest version of your model. Um, but if you need to go get it, you can go to your content manager and search uh, whatever model you have and click copy ID. And then you can paste it uh, and detach. Obviously, I don't want that uh, attached on there, so I'm going to remove that. But that's how you do that. Um, and then you have to make it Quest compatible. So the first thing you're going to want to do before anything else, um, you need to remove the particles from uh, the hands because particles are not supported on Quest. You're going to open up your shoulders. You're going to click on where it says horsey high five, select both. I hold control to select both and I'm just going to hit delete. They're gone. Um, that's the first thing you need to get rid of. Uh, everything else, it's just a material swap and you should be good to go. So, um, what I recommend doing is going to your folder where you have your custom textures. First, you're going to create a folder, call it quest or whatever you want to name it. Then you're going to duplicate your materials again. You're going to select them all, hit control D. Let that be done. Drag and drop that into quest here. Then you're going to open up your quest folder, select them all. And up here, you're going to go to VR chat, mobile, tunelet, and it will automatically convert all of these into your quest, uh, your quest shaders. Now, um, if you, once you, when you're ready to get rid of your PC version off your screen, go back into your custom folder and you're going to grab this, drag and drop it here, and it will create a prefab, which means that you can now remove this from your scene. And if you need to add it back, you can drag and drop it and it'll have all the same settings. Um, so now you have your quest version up here and now all you have to do is drag and drop your materials on um, and it'll look slightly different color and that's just because um, quest doesn't support certain things when it comes to shading. Uh, and so you're going to drag and drop everything onto the proper section. You need to once again show the bridle, attach the quest material, hide the bridle again. You're going to want to open up the head. Show the reins, attach the quest material, hide the reins, um, and then you're going to want to show the clothes and attach those materials as well. And then once all your materials are added, make sure to hide the hoodie, hide the bridle, hide the reins, all that good stuff. Um, and then you're already ready to upload. So now what I would recommend is um, you go to your VRChat SDK, go to Builder. You're going to hit Switch Build Target, and you're going to switch to Android. You're going to hit Confirm. Um, if it doesn't let you, or it doesn't even give you the option to switch to Android, you have not added the Android support in Unity. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that, but it's pretty self-explanatory in the Creator, Compa Creator Companion on how to do that. It should, I think, automatically do that with Creator Companion, um, but if not, you have to go into your Unity Hub. It's a whole thing. But... By now, you should probably already have it. And if you don't want to upload for Quest, you're already done. Um, and even if you're a Quest standalone user, I recommend uploading a PC version of your Quest model. Um, so uploading to Windows as well, so that people that don't use standalone Quest can see your model still. Uh, so now let's wait for this. All right, so it has now switched to Android build. It's all blue here. Ignore that. doesn't matter. Um, you're going to go to your builder here. Now, it's going to say everything's in the red. It's not very optimized for Quest, but uploading it for Quest just so that people can unhide the model and see it if they want is great. So it's all going to be red here. As long as this is clickable, you are able to upload for Quest. If it is grayed out, then um, you have to check what is saying is the issue. Now, if there's too many fizz bone transform counts, for example, if you have the wings attached, if you have the curly hair, if you have any of the braided hair variants attached, um, there's a very high chance it'll say that you have too many fizz bone transform counts. Um, so you can either, you have a few options. You can remove those mesh, mesh, meshes entirely, 
for example, my Cremella Unicorn and my um, Andalusian Giraffe, I have the hair removed for it to be able to upload. Um, so they're bald. Well, for the giraffe, they still have their straight bangs. But yeah, um, for it to upload to Quest. Um, something else you can do is just remove the bones. Um, I'll show you how to remove bones from something. So let's say you're removing the bones from the ears here. You're just going to collect or you're going to click where it says bones and just literally hit delete. I'm going to hit control Z though because I don't want to get rid of them. Um, and you're just going to delete it. And then when you click back here, it should update and say that it's changed. And once this is able to be clicked, you have removed enough bones. For the wings, um, I don't recommend deleting the wings, but you you delete the bones from the wings, which means the idle animation will still work. And so will um, the wing slider if you want to do like a, like a fake flapping your wings thing or whatever you want to do with that. Um, so I would recommend keeping that. But when it comes to the hair, I think that it looks, I mean, it's up to you, but I would just not use those hairs for quest. Um, for example, for my hyena base, I don't recommend using the locks as there's too many bones, but if I didn't have that many bones, it would look bad. And if you remove all the bones together, it will look bad <laughs> just based on how you move and because it won't be reacting to the colliders, it'll be clipping through you, whatever. Um, so yeah, there's my disclaimer there. Or you can find other means of removing stuff. So let's say you'd rather have bones in the hair, but you don't care about um, having the reins. You can literally delete the reins altogether. Um, that'll get rid of some transform counts. You can remove the bones from the tail and the ears. Um, you just have to find a workaround so that it is under, I believe, 64. So right now it says 37, so you're fine. Um, everything else should be fine. Um, texture memory usage. If you're bothered by um, the resolution of your textures for Quest, you can go back to your custom thing. You're going to want to duplicate your textures and then select them all, go to Inspector, and you're going to want to change the default to 2048 instead of um, 4096. Just as a disclaimer. Um, when you import in a texture that's fresh, it'll say 2048 and then you can change it to 4096, which is what I do. Um, but of course, it's different for everyone. By default, all the textures in your Unity file will already be converted to 4096. But if you want to drop them down to 2048, 512, however low resolution you want it, you do it there, hit apply. Um, and so that will change your texture memory usage. But yeah. So once that's all uploaded um, and you have the proper blueprint ID attached, you want the same exact blueprint ID for your PC and Quest version, um, then you just hit build and publish for Android, upload, um, and that's it. And then you have your model in VR chat that will work in PC, uh, on PC and also on Quest, um, and you're good to go. A few things to keep in mind with. Uh, in the console, sometimes you'll have some stuff that has a red error or a yellow error. Um, just hit clear. If it doesn't go away, then there's actually an issue that won't let you upload. Um, but besides that, uh, if it clears and there's nothing there, there's nothing for you to worry about. Another issue that sometimes happens um, with the materials. Oh, let's just hit revert for that. Um, if there's any issue that you're having with the materials, uh, for example, or no. If there's an error with your materials and it shows this really harsh black shading, all you have to do is um, lock and unlock or unlock and relock and unlock your material and it will reset itself. Okay, I'm going to switch back to Windows uh, and just show another way um, of setting up your model if you are interested. Although what I just explained is what I would recommend. Um, also, if you are exporting something in to Unity, make sure to leave your leaf bones as it helps with the uh, fizz bones. Uh, and then, so once you're done with both of these, I recommend um, just putting in the prefab for both and you have them done. I'm just going to put the quest one in the quest folder and you can delete it and get rid of it. Uh, so now another way to set up your model, if you are interested, you can go to pref or you can go to parts, you can drag and drop your body in and then you can drag and drop all the parts that you want. So see how it's pink here? Just ignore that. You can uh, drag and drop in the horse ears, for example. We'll pick a hairstyle, the braided hair, uh, tails, the arm fluff, 
rings, for example, and wings. Now, all of these things will not have the proper colliders added. So that's something that you need to um, keep in mind. So, but what you need to do is unpack your body prefab. You're gonna open it up and I'm gonna show you where to pair everything. So you want to make sure your tail is paired to the hips. You're just gonna drag and drop it onto the hips. Uh, wings paired to the chest, drag and drop onto the chest. Um, if you're using the bottom main prefab for the hair, make sure to drag and drop it onto the neck. For the head, you're gonna grab your reins, your braided hair and your ears, and you're gonna drag and drop it onto the head. Now for the arm fluff, um, you want to drag and drop it onto the hand bone. So arm fluff R goes onto hand R and arm fluff L goes onto hand L. For the legs, you're gonna to wanna to attach it to the shin bones. Um, and so those are all added. Now, what you wanna keep in mind now though, is that um, all of the colliders are not set up. So you need to open up all of these. The wings don't have any colliders. You're, for example, you're gonna click the long tail bones. See how it says size one, element zero, and it says none. It'll tell you how many colliders you need to um, attach. So you can kind of fill in the blanks, but I'll show you for the tail. You just want the floor collider. Um, now the one that's unpacked will look like this and all the blue ones will be the prefab. So you can find the correct one there. Um, for the arm fluff, um, I just type in hoof and you're gonna want for the right arm fluff, you're gonna want the right hoof collider. And for arm fluff L, you're gonna do the left hoof collider there. For the braided hair right, you see there's five here. Braid, the braided hair on both sides will have six. So you're gonna want to do the right arm collider. You're gonna wanna do the chest, the neck, the head, and the muzzle. There's a muzzle collider for these hairs. And the muzzle collider. Uh, for the horse ears, just the head. Um, so you can pretty much fill in the blanks. So you'll see a certain amount of colliders available and you just know which ones to fill in. And so you have all of this attached. And then just to make sure all your colliders work, you can press play. Um, and you'll see here the tail should be sticking up. That means it's colliding with the floor. Good. Um, and then you can test the arms and making sure that it's colliding properly. You can see the hair is going over the shoulder. You can um, add in the gesture manager again. And you can you can drag this in while it's in play mode and it'll be fine. Um, so you can click on gesture mode and make sure that your particles are working. You can see them in here, they're just hiding. Here, I will, uh, there you go. You can make sure that that's all working, your head pat, your boop, everything. Um, you'll see that the, the wings are working everything works correctly. You can see it fighting to collide with the head. And then you can remove brushy play and you can upload again. So that should be all set up. Now, if you wanna make sure that your animations are still working, you can click on the body, you can go to animation. Now, everything that's yellow, ignore it. It's just saying, oh, I have it covered. Everything that's yellow, ignore here. Um, it's just saying that uh, the meshes aren't there, which is true because you only have the horse ears. But as you can see, since you've placed the horse ears in the right spot, um, the rotation is correct. And you can also check um, the ear flicks, you know, the tail flick. You can see that where it matters, it works um, because it's, uh, it's gray right there. You can see it. Um, you can also just test it by pressing play um, and it'll show it doing its thing. I think that's it. So those are really the, the two ways that I would recommend putting it together. Although of course, number one recommendation is to just use the everything prefab and set it up that way. And then you can do this. I have a quest version of it as well. So just do the same thing for quest or you can duplicate it and change your materials. Duplicate the one you've already set up and change your materials. Um, yeah, and that's it. And don't forget when you're done to make a prefab of whatever you've made so that you don't lose it. Um, I'm gonna delete the prefab though, because I don't need it. Uh, and if it's red like this, it won't go away. Just unpack it and you can repack it how you want. Yeah, <clears throat> that's it. Um, if you have any other questions, make sure to join my Discord. If you like the model, 
Um, make sure to rate it five stars on Gumroad. It helps it be seen by other people. Um, helps it be seen by other people. And that means more people can be horsies with ya. Um, if you have any other questions or something about the tutorial doesn't make any sense, feel free to, um, like I said, join my Discord server and talk to me that way. Um, also, plenty of people in the server will also be happy to help you. Um, as well as I'm sure there's plenty of people in the server that will help you with retextures if you want to commission them, or um, they can help you optimize it for Quest better. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for buying my horse base. This is my favorite base I've made so far, and so I hope you like it too. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like the model. Thank you again. I really appreciate you. Um, thank you for watching. Have a lovely day. Love you. Bye.